Titan and solve every problem that you may have. There's even things like this extraordinary whitening crystal chalk chip toothpaste, toothpaste lollipops. I have to give those a try. But what really is going on inside here? What ingredients, what properties do we want this material to have? Let's have a look. Aqua, water. Hydrated silica, sorbitol, aloe vera, hydrated starch. The most popular brands average around 18 ingredients each. Xanthi gum, bicarbonate of soda. But do I need them all? A few key substances come up again and again. Sodium lauryl sulfate, sodium lauryl sulfate, and another sodium lauryl sulfate. This is a surfactant, a chemical that lowers the surface tension of a liquid, which can allow bubbles to form. Sodium lauryl sulfate is such a powerful foaming agent that if I just add a small amount of it to some peanut butter, a bit of water, it's going to be a bit gross. Hang on, bear with me. It's really getting frothy now. We don't actually need our paste to froth. It's just what we are used to. This is really strange. Although I know this is just peanut butter, the sensation of the foaming agent did make it feel so much like a regular toothpaste. But it's a potential for my paste because it can also damage the cell walls of bacteria. Glycerin, glycerin, glycerin. This is glycerin, a rather viscous liquid. It's a humectant, which likes to hold onto moisture, so it makes sure the paste is sort of pasty and that when you squeeze it, it can sort of glide out of the tube. Another useful ingredient. Most toothpastes contain an abrasive agent to help remove the buildup of plaque. And a really common abrasive is this stuff, calcium carbonate, which is just chalk. Abrasive agents can range from the very fine, like the chalk, to more gritty ones like activated charcoal. Activated charcoal is highly adsorbent. Now, this is because of its microporous structure. It has lots and lots and lots of tiny holes. Just one gram has a surface area of around 2,000 square meters. I can demonstrate its adsorbent qualities by adding blue dye to two separate beakers of water and stirring charcoal into one of them. And then leave it. 40 minutes later... Oh, yes. It's cleared every trace of the blue. But under the microscope, we can see just how gritty a charcoal-based toothpaste can be. Oh, looks almost full of shards, like sharp grit. Wow, that's rough. I'm not sure I'd want that on my teeth. The one ingredient I am keen to add to my toothpaste is fluoride, a mineral that has been proven to be one of the most effective ways of preventing tooth decay. And I'm just going to dissolve some in water. I'll give that a stir. Found in most toothpastes, fluoride's powerful properties help repair damaged tooth enamel, but also provide a protective barrier against corrosion from bacterial acids. I've got two eggs. One, I'm going to coat with the fluoride by just dropping it gently into the fluoride solution. Similar to the enamel of our teeth, the shell of an egg is vulnerable to acid and could, in theory, be protected by fluoride. So this egg is hopefully now coated in a layer of fluoride. And this uncoated egg is the equivalent of a tooth that hasn't got the coating of fluoride. I'm going to now put both of these eggs into white vinegar. With a pH of around 2.5, white vinegar is acidic enough to damage teeth and eggshells. Almost immediately, bubbles are forming on the surface of this uncoated egg. The calcium carbonate in the eggshell is reacting with the vinegar. Very quickly, this egg is starting to dissolve. Whilst the egg coated in fluoride, nothing. If left in acid overnight, the shell would completely dissolve. It's a marked difference. It's pretty impressive, really. But even brushing twice a day with a fluoride paste doesn't provide round-the-clock protection, as fluoride washes away over the course of a day. Oh, Robert, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Professor Robert Hill and his team at Queen Mary's University have invented a new material to create an even better fluoride barrier. What we've developed is a special uh, bioactive glass that dissolves in the saliva, and as it dissolves, it releases the fluoride. 
So your fluoride is embedded in the glass? Yes, and the glass is designed to stick to the teeth, so you get slow delivery over 10 to 12 hours. So you've developed what sounds to me like a magic ingredient. And, and you could say, if you like the word, that it's a smart material. <laughs> <laughs> so glass being in the toothpaste might make people go, crikey, I'm not going to put glass in my mouth. But I imagine these are very small particles. Yes, the average particle size is, is about a tenth of the thickness of a human hair. How much like traditional glass that maybe we'd have in our windows, is it? And if you made your window panes out of this glass, it would just dissolve and when it, it rained. Rain? Yeah. They'd disappear. <laughs> This is the furnace room where the glass is going to be cast into water. I'm going to stand well back. Robert's silicate glass encapsulates fluoride within its structure. The glass is heated to a temperature of around 1,400 degrees Celsius. Incredible molten amber liquid before being rapidly quenched in cold water, fracturing into hundreds of tiny fragments of glass like snow in the bottom of the bucket. It's quite heavy. The water is drained away, leaving behind gritty chunks. And we will now grind this glass to a fine powder that we can then use in the toothpaste. The particles will go through more than 10 hours of grinding to reach the required size for a toothpaste. You can feel the fine powder. Oh, that's quite gritty. In your world, that's gritty. <laughs> in my world, that's fine. But the magic properties of this bioglass don't stop at fluoride protection. Robert and his team have also added calcium and phosphate ions, two of the main minerals in tooth enamel. So in here we have our scanning electron microscope. These minerals mimic and attach to the tooth surface, delivering the fluoride, but that's not all. Here we have a picture of the dentinal tubules in, in a tooth. And, and these tubules become exposed as a, as a result of the enamel that you've lost on the tooth surface. Without the enamel protection, substances like ice cream or hot soup can go right through these tubules to our nerves, causing pain and sensitivity. So the, the, the solution is to block these tubules, and this is what we've done with the bioglass. And oh, here we yeah. have the, the <laughs> same section, but now brushed with the bioglass toothpaste. That's your special bioglass bunging up the holes. Bunging <laughs> up the holes, that's right. Amazingly, the calcium and phosphate remineralize and restore the outer layer where the enamel has been worn away. So your bioglass is actually doing two things. It's releasing that protective fluoride, but it's also blocking those dentinal tubules. That's exactly right. Uh, and that makes it a very effective ingredient for toothpaste. Right now, this innovative material is only available in one range of paste, and at nearly four times the price of many high street brands, it doesn't come cheap but it offers an exciting future for the health of our teeth. I'm really thrilled because Robert's given me a little sachet of his bioglass powder. Magic stuff. And it's definitely going into my mixture.